Hello and welcome, everybody. Um, my, name is, uh, my name is Alex Barth. I'm with uh, Mapbox. I'm also with OpenStreetMap US, and uh, we've helped here like, put this conference together, so I'm hoping that you all have a good time. I know some of you have probably like, spent some time with the coffee line, where something that we're fixing. Uh, but <laughs> otherwise, I hope that you're all doing good here. Um, yeah, so I'd like to talk today about how the paid mappers are coming to, uh, to, to OpenStreetMap. Uh, at Mapbox, I work as part of the data team. Uh, and we're pulling together like a professional team of mappers. And that's what, like, what, that's what I'd like to dive in here. In 2012, when we got Foursquare onto OpenStreetMap, we got uh, great feedback and great press. Like here, for instance, in, the, in Read Write, some people got very excited about us on Twitter, but not all the feedback that we got was very good. So for instance, this gentleman here from Brazil was like, my map just like my city just went missing from the map. What happened? So we like created a uh, all hands on deck mapping session at Mapbox and put cities on the map as people got us like feedback hey, like there's something missing on the map and we worked on like turning this experience in, into this one, right? <laughs> now OpenStreetMap really is at the heart of what we're doing at Mapbox. Our mission is to change and how people move around in the world, and we really believe that this is, we, we will do that and we'll uh, achieve that uh, by using open data and by being a very active contributor uh, in an open data space uh, like OpenStreetMap. Now, every time when we bring a new customer online, we get many more new eyes onto OpenStreetMap, like in, this, uh, in, in, like in these examples here with Pinterest, GitHub, or Road Trippers, and our question uh, whenever we bring in new customers is always like, how can we turn our customers and users into mappers. If we can't turn them into uh, mappers, how can we turn them into uh, passive contributors? Really all with the idea of like building, helping build like the best map of the world. Now, we're doing this um, by building a team of expert mappers. That's like uh, a shot of like everybody who is involved right now, over 20 people at Mapbox doing uh, active mapping uh, analyzing the map, building the tools, fixing errors, and adding data to OpenStreetMap. But we're not surveyors, right? We love food surveys, and we do that. Like, this is an example of us working, like, in our office, around our office in Bangalore, like, uh, mapping the streets there. But that's not our strength. Our strength is, like, uh, massive remote mapping. We uh, really see ourselves as, like, as the part in the community that can play, can play this type of role. And really, like, and we heard this a little bit uh, in, in Richard's talk before, it's, there's a very exciting combination in OpenStreetMap between like, immense, like, uh, an immense like, wealth and uh, a trove of like, local knowledge that people contribute to the map, and there is a strong component of remote mapping that really makes this, this project so remarkable. Now, I want to talk about, uh, about, about this uh, sort of um, arrival of sort of pro mappers in, 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 in OpenStreetMap. And I'm not only think, thinking about our team here. This is something that we're seeing across the board. This is something we see other teams doing in OpenStreetMap right, right now, being, be it commercial organizations or be it government, or governments or like nonprofits that are starting to take an interest in OpenStreetMap. And I really think that if we do this well and if we grow this map into what it can be in the future, we will, we will see a lot more of these professional mapping teams in the community and we really want to build and help build uh, a, 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 like a positive and like productive uh, culture of like professional mapping within, within OpenStreetMap. Now there's a couple of things that, uh, that organizations, institutional mappers can bring to OpenStreetMap that they're really good at. Number one, they can drive traffic, right? Um, when, you know, like in the examples that I gave you before with Mapbox customers, similar if you're like a government or if you're like an NGO, if you expose OpenStreetMap to your constituents, you're probably talking to like a larger group of people and you can expose them all at once to OpenStreetMap. Uh, we have the resources and like the staff often like to do volume work and maybe do the work that is not as much fun, uh, you know, fixing all the little correction errors w that just pile up over time to really like make the map, for instance, a, a good routable map. Um, and we can contribute on behalf of other organizations. There are many organizations out there that are ready to give their data or their knowledge to OpenStreetMap, but they actually don't have the time or the expertise or don't really understand how this works with this OpenStreetMap thing. And uh, it's useful for them to have uh, organizational uh, partners to speak to. And again, I'm not only thinking about Mapbox here, I'm thinking about like, other organizations in the space here that can, that can play these types of roles. And lastly, uh, we all build tools. Uh, the community builds amazing tools 
uh, with, uh, in, with like an organizational background, I think we are like in a really good position to actually start contributing to some of these tools very, very actively that are being created out there in the community. And with that, I wanna give a couple of examples on how we work at Mapbox uh, to make this a little bit, uh, little bit, more, uh, little bit more clear. Um, number one, driving local contributions. Uh, on every Mapbox map, you'll see like this little improve this map link that you can click on and you can dive from right there into editing OpenStreetMap directly with ID or, if you're, or, or with JASM. Uh, we're bringing this like out there now, like on on, uh, on every one of our on every one of our maps. Now, uh, most people actually we found out um, don't have the time inclination or uh, the perspective to start mapping directly there where they found a problem on the map. They'd much rather just leave us a, a message and hey, there is something wrong. If they do this, if they you know we just like look uh, use our feedback form, it winds up for us in a GitHub repository that we take a look at every every single day. And uh, we'll get like tickets cut like this. We're using Zapier for that. This is a really like, neat like tool for like plugging things on the web together really easily. It works very nicely. And uh, once we have once we have uh, uh, feedback tickets like that, um, we st we verify them against a secondary source. And if we can verify them against a secondary source, we actually enter that data directly into OpenStreetMap. If we can't verify it, we use this remarkable notes feature in OpenStreetMap that was launched like maybe just a year two years ago. Um, that allows you to leave something like a sticky note on OpenStreetMap and say like, hey, there's something wrong. Could you go check? And we really have like very good sort of experience with this feature that really allows us to interact with local community uh, around, the around the planet, uh, where we really see like once we like start dropping notes, people come back and give us feedback and actually you know fix the fix the error on the ground, which is close to note and say like you know what this uh, this was not this was not appropriate feedback. Now the world is very big, uh, and one of the questions that we started to ask ourselves, so like where, you know, if we have a team of mappers here, where should we go? I mean, if we start on the top left and we work our way to the bottom right, are we going to be here until uh, like a very, very long time? Um, a great way for us to look at this is uh, to look where Mapbox customer look at on the map. And this is a visualization of that. What you see here is uh, the bright spots are where the Mapbox users are all hanging out and looking at the map and doing their thing. Um, now, the question is like where in these locations are we missing uh, information? And what we did as a next step is we looked at, um, we looked at like the satellite map uh, and, and we made like a very uh, naive uh, uh, assumption that turned out to be very, very useful. We were like, hey look, if we have a lot of data in a location, that map tile is going to be, according to signal theory, is going to be a very large map tiles. It's going to have a lot, of, a lot of kilobytes. If there's nothing on the map, it's probably just a very, very small tile, right? If it's just ocean or if it's just trees, it's going to be a very small tile. Now, if I go then and compare this with like the nodes that I have in OpenStreetMap, I can like actually start saying things. So now, if I look at all the locations in the world, we have a lot of Mapbox users looking, we have the very heavy tiles, but I have no data in OpenStreetMap, what do I get? And the result is this. We extracted like uh, a large number of these locations in the world, and lo and behold, like you actually have locations where we are like missing massive amounts of data. We sent our data team in, and we like traced all all of these locations. Another example, and this is something that we just started working on. I'm pretty excited about this. Is uh, feature extraction. Uh, this is an example of a first algorithm that we are running here um, across um, across like residential areas, where you can see. Yes, uh, we start to see buildings here, uh, and the buildings are the red things on there. Uh, it's not good enough yet to do like this type of quality that you would expect in OpenStreetMap. This is an example of like uh, buildings in, in San Francisco that we traced, uh, about 150,000 of them. So that you can see like there's like a difference in quality um, that is quite stark. But what is really interesting is to use this algorithm, algorithm to see on the map where we're missing data, right? This is a similar algorithm here. We're detecting buildings here. Our algorithm says, hey, based on, um, uh, based on, uh, based on like what I'm seeing here in a map, uh, I have like an 87% confidence that there is a building in this map. And the really remarkable thing for training machine learning algorithms like that in OpenStreetMap is that we have a huge training data set, right? So I can take all the buildings that I already have in OpenStreetMap and compare this with the satellite imagery that we have and then I can say like, look, let me use this data to train our machine learning algorithm to find all the other buildings that we don't have yet. Uh, we're right now focusing actually not as much as like using this to trace buildings, but actually to use, use this to like find places in the world where there are buildings but no roads. 
Here's a couple of other examples where the algorithm would say like, no, well, no building. Here we have a building, no building here. Here we have the algorithm actually missing the building on the bottom right. And again, like the same picture from, the, from before. Uh, now, what, what I'm really excited about is, is passive contributing. Um, what, I've, what I've like talked about so far is like either we get feedback from our customers directly or we go out there and we sort of analyze the maps for problems that we can fix as remote mappers. But what's really interesting is like to start using like what everybody, like this type of location information that we all start to produce either directly like on our cell phones or passively with cars and so forth. So in, in, uh, to give you an example for this, uh, we are working right now with a, a pilot with uh, RunKeeper. Uh, RunKeeper uses OpenStreetMap uh, on their website for planning your routes. And when you look at the results of like these routes that RunKeeper users do on uh, the platform, is like you'll see like a remarkable level of detail re 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 revealed about the world. And this would be like a shot here from, um, from like Central Park, uh, and now you can see how we could easily we, how we can easily use that to actually compare this with OpenStreetMap and go like, hey, where do we have like the tracks missing, right? Where do people run? Where do, be, do people use like their bicycles? But we don't have actually any knowledge of the world, and we can go in and we can actually like trace this all out. Now, just with this analysis with RunKeeper, we found about six or seven thousand locations just in the United States, about forty-five thousand locations in the world where we think that there is data missing. Now we just can't go and like use this data that we like compare here and we extract and just like sort of shove this into OpenStreetMap. You actually have to have somebody go look and say like, hey, is there really something missing? How does this really look like in the, on the ground? Uh, is it safe enough to add data here? You have to have this expertise, right? And uh, what we do here for like us or for our team to go in and actually do this type of work at scale is we're using a tool ca called uh, Tufix. You'll hear a little bit more about Tufix from the guy who just walked in here, Aaron, uh, who is going to have a talk tomorrow uh, at uh, 10 o'clock, I think, uh, about, about this tool. Uh, it's really, it's very, it takes inspiration from this tool, the map roulette that you may be familiar with. And really, it's a microtasking manager. You get one location after the other from like the six or 7,000 locations in the US. And you take a look at it, and if you see like actual improvement on the ground, an, 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 an opportunity for an improvement, on the map, you can like hop into the editor and actually like then trace this information off of satellite imagery. This is available on um, on GitHub. Uh, you can you can either access it like on OSM Lab GitHub slash two fix. Uh, the tool that we are using internally is open to you all uh, to participate or to review. Um, and uh, you can also download this from GitHub here. We're not only using like our own analysis, we're also tapping into like other people in the communities, like tools, and here this would be an example of Osmos. This is a really great project run by the French OpenStreetMap Foundation. Uh, they are analyzing the map and exposing errors here. There are other tools like that, for instance, by Geofabric, the OSM inspector. This is very exciting because what we're building here is that not only like teams that do like the Q&A work and single mappers that do their Q&A work, but we build a community of like quality uh, control and Q&A uh, where we can share knowledge about the quality of the map and we can collaborate around improving it systematically. Our actions are not only driven by our customers' needs. Uh, when the earthquake happened uh, in Nepal in April, our data team sprung immediately to, to action like on a Sunday morning and we started to like render out uh, satellite imagery uh, together with partners like Digital Globe and made it available to the community uh, to like the amazing like relief effort or crisis mapping effort that was headed up by the... It's an interesting like sync problem here, okay. That was headed up by the humanitarian OpenStreetMap uh, open team. And we jumped in mapping ourselves. Um, and we didn't only map, but we also like helped validate uh, information that was contributed by, by, by I think about 3,000 new people who flooded into OpenStreetMap uh, and started to map uh, among like the 5,000 overall mappers that we had active in the, in the crisis response to, ne to Nepal. All with the goal to like really make sure that maps are in shape and OpenStreetMap is in shape for analysis or for uh, using uh, the maps on the ground, the mobile devices, or on paper maps here with this example from like uh, how the Canadians used OpenStreetMap to really have appropriate uh, maps on the ground for the response. Our team alone in, within this ec uh, effort uh, modified about 1.5 million uh, objects and we committed over, over 10,000 edits to OpenStreetMap uh, just with the Nepal effort. Uh, among us, among our uh, team members right now, we have about a quarter million edits to OpenStreetMap. This is a pretty big number. Ten of, uh, ten of our mappers right now 
are among like the 50 contributors to OpenStreetMap. So there's a lot of sort of also a lot of resp responsibility that comes with that. We actually create like a, a pretty large volume of data as as we work. And and what's really important for us is to do all of that in the open and to be very exposed to everybody's feedback, right? And we've had actually very good experience here again, like on the notes feature that I showed you but also like the messaging feature on OpenStreetMap, but really starting conversations with people of like, hey, how, where can we do better work, right? Where did we do something wrong? Where, we could, where could we do better and better? And where can we actually like also get ideas for like, what else could we be doing? Um, to share all of that, we have a wiki page up on, great, we have a, <laughs> we have a wiki page up uh, on, uh, on the OpenStreetMap wiki where you can see everything about Mapbox, but you can also uh, see about like the Mapbox data team here and you can see all the work all the projects that we're working on actively and the past projects uh, documented here. And you can also like, get access directed to, uh, to our team members that are active mappers in OpenStreetMap and that you may see like, mapping in your neighborhood. Uh, to really sort of govern like, the way how we would like to interact with community and how we would like to work on OpenStreetMap, we developed like, this data team guidelines for us uh, that I'd like to share here. Um, those six points, but really what, it come, what they come down to and what's really important is, is number one, community. Uh, we listen to community, we work with community. To make this really a successful project, uh, we, need to, we need to get on the same page of where we want to go uh, for the big questions and the small questions. Quality is paramount, like everything that we commit to OpenStreetMap, we want to hold it ourselves to the highest level of standards and we want others also to help hold ourselves to these, to these standards. And, and last and, and really importantly, uh, lo local knowledge, right? This is really what like, makes this project so exciting and one of the most valuable contributions that we have to OpenStreetMap. And with that, this actually takes me back right straight to the beginning, right? When we had like this user complain uh, to us that the, that the city like disappeared from the map and how we went back in and traced that map on OpenStreetMap. Obviously on the satellite imagery, we couldn't see like the street names and like the points of interest, right? But when you go back today to the city, it's uh, the city is like Campo Grande in, 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 in Brazil, you see like these street names here, right? And you see that the stadium is in and there's buildings around that, there's points of interest, and this is probably like the best park map that Campo Grande has ever had, I'm going to say. Uh, not our work, this was all done by like local contributors. In the meantime, now when you look back to like the work that um, that has been done on top of what, what we have contributed back then. And this is really, like, this is really illustrating of like, what we want to do and where we want to go. Uh, this collaboration between like, uh, sort of uh, from the sky mappers and like, local knowledge, this is really how OpenStreetMap is going to win and uh, what we want to uh, contribute to. Thank you. Question. behind making OSM better map. What's the ROI? How do you, how do they, who pays their salary and how? What's the ROI on paid mapping? <laughs> well, it's the services that we provide at Mapbox, right? So if you need a map, if you like geocoding services, direction services, if you'd like to build your own mapping experience, you'll come to Mapbox and you'll either sign up for like a small account like that is free or as you have more traffic, you'll upgrade from there and you'll pay us like five, five fifty, five hundred dollars a month or much more if you do a lot of traffic and really like, Customers come to us for two reasons. They come because they want, a, they want a good looking map. They want to have awesome APIs for that. And the second reason is to come for the data, right? And this is really what we're working on, right? You said local knowledge. Do you mean within your own mapping data team? Or did you mean they set up the map so that people with local knowledge can contribute. Yeah. So the question was, what, what do I mean with local knowledge? I mean the local knowledge that you like observe on the ground when you map, right? In your neighborhood, we, we by and large do not have local knowledge, right? Yeah. Other questions? Good question. So the question was, 
are you guys working in India? Um, and the question is coming because we have a team in India, and the answer is yes, we're working in India. Uh, we're working also on the map in India. Now look, our focus right now is like for customers like in the US and Europe, because this is really where we have most of our customers right now. But we're starting to get active to actually like start uh, promoting op uh, OpenStreetMap also in the local community. For instance, right, uh, very recently we've helped set up uh, OpenStreetMap.in. You can like now a, a map of the world there, all based on OpenStreetMap um, with the Indian borders. Uh, which is important, and um, we've also set up a tasking manager for India that is uh, that has started to be used for from people in the community, and actually also by other uh, professional mapping teams. So, a question: Have we thought about how we can provide feedback to new users in OpenStreetMap? Um, Yes, uh, and I think, the, so w one thing that I really want to get to is we, we really built, like, as you can imagine, as we, like, um, train new mappers coming on, like, many of, like, few of us who have started uh, to do professional mapping at Mapbox uh, have actually a background in OpenStreetMap and have had many thousand edits before they started to map with Mapbox. Uh, many of them don't to come in and have maybe a couple of hundred, or maybe they haven't edited on OpenStreetMap, but they really want to get into it. So we're developing like training material and training plans to get people up and to speed on mapping on OpenStreetMap. And this is something that I'd like to start sharing a lot more openly. Uh, right now, this is like just not in very good shape, but this is something that we've been like talking about a lot and that we want to do very soon and get our training materials out there for everybody to like copy from. Frederick. Hello. Yeah. Um, so remember Richard's Richard's talk in the other room where he painted the where he told the story of how OSM started and how people sat there and said, "This is never going to work." Um, and then they said, "Oh well, it actually seems to be working." Hearing you, it sounds to me as if Mapbox is in the "This is never going to work" parenthesis without our help parenthesis camp because you say, well, we actually need to pay lots of people to make lots of edits to find places where data is still miss missing because it's not going to work on its own, right? That I, I, see, uh, I see a slight discrepancy between that and what Richard said in his talk before. So I'm going to repeat the question because this way it's going to be on, the, on a video recording. The question essentially is, uh, is, am I saying it's never going to work unless we, unless Mapbox or other professional mappers start doing this? Uh, I, I really don't look at it this way. Uh, I think in many ways it, it's already working for many people. I think also referring to Richard's talk, actually, what's interesting is like, hey, this is OpenStreetMap. Uh, it's a very useful map already. If there's something in there that I don't have in there that, that, I, that I need in the map, I can go in there and I can add that data, right? And it's really, this is really the magic about the project, right? It's actually remarkably easy to, to, to add your location to OpenStreetMap and make it useful for the context that, you, that you'd like to use it for. And this is really what we're doing as well here, right? We do this like with our means here uh, as like people, as like sort of more remote mappers than local mappers. Again, we're not surveyors, um, but this is really the way I'm, the way, the way I'm looking at it. We need, to we need to remember that the best way to get information or to get answers on the internet is not to post questions. It's not to say, please help us map. It's to give them a wrong map and let them fix it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, as, as you're doing with um, mapping satellites and, and tracing roads, somebody sees their road the, where they live, it has no name. They'll probably put the name in. Yeah. Yeah. Question? To that, uh, companies may want a certain area improved for the customer. They don't have the expertise in-house. They may not purchase Mapbox maps. Do you see your company or another offering that subset of your services to a company that wants Detroit roads fixed? Um, so the question is like, would we, would we like offered like mapping services to other companies um, to do basically what we're doing for our customers right now? Um, n no, like it's not what we're, it's not really not in the cards right now. We're really focused on like building the maps that 
we're seeing are necessary for like serving the for serving our markets. Um, I'm kind of curious because uh, you know we've talked about basically like the workflow of OSM and how Mapbox is integrated with that and how it's really an effective way to to map and and I wonder if uh, it's in the cards for Mapbox to sort of evangelize that to other sectors that do mapping, but maybe not in maybe not the same sort of way. I'm thinking mostly uh, like I was just in the FHWA talk, so I'm thinking about like state DOTs or other public agencies that have a lot of uh, mapping and they might do these annual updates of their inventory yeah. and maybe there's a more dynamic way for them to, to interact and share that information. Uh, so the question was, hey, would MapBox evangelize and recommend uh, and promote like this type of activity to other organizations? Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's something that I would absolutely recommend to anybody who is in a situation like that. If you have things to fix on the map, go, go fix them, right? But do it in a very responsible way. Uh, make sure that you work with all like the, um, you know, the community and all the stakeholders involved to make sure you're doing actually good work on the map. Uh, question over here. Yes. Um, building footprints versus building rooftops, right? So like a lot of, from a city and county perspective, they're generally concerned with building footprints as related to taxing, as to really related to calculating stormwater runoff. Um, can you comment a little bit about, I don't know, not necessarily bulk updating, but you know, we've got a lot of data for our city customers that are building footprints that are in their eyes the correct data versus what might be rooftops that are already in OSM. Yeah, question, building footprints versus building rooftops, we're, we're tracing in OpenStreetMap in general, building footprints. I mean, you can trace like beautiful 3D buildings and you should check out New York City on a 3D map, it looks amazing. But we, in general, like the rule is the first thing that you put on a, before a building on, so the OpenStreetMap open is going to be the footprint. Questions, more questions in the center here? contribute the information that you're missing? How to get com people on the ground to contribute the information uh, that we're missing, right? So that was the question. Well, that's a, that's, a really good, that's a really good question. I think this is sort of like the question for everybody in the room, right? Um, and how do we actually grow this uh, community here from, uh, from, the, from the grassroots level? I think one, one of the things here that uh, I think we can contribute as Mapbox, uh, as somebody who gets like a lot of eyes on the map, is create visibility around the, around the project, right? And not only like with the attribution, but also with like the public, you know, the access to PR that we have, right? And by like getting the word out there that hey, OpenStreetMap is being used and it is really like getting very established now and there's a very high quality data set that you should be using. And we can, and this is a message that for, goes, goes from like, from, from us to like people who could turn into individual contributors, but also is, is, is a message that I'm trying to get to other institutions in the space because then again, like I said before, they have like their own constituencies that they can reach that we do not reach directly, right? That's just one way on how I, uh, how I think about this, but I think we need to actually challenge ourselves to like think a lot more and how, how do we get actually like, you know, people on the ground mapping, right? I loved, I really loved Richard's tool. Uh, Richard's tool where you can say like the addresses, like map them by voice, voice mapping, that's going to be the future. Okay, with that, with that I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for your attention.